Um, I'm just going to pull out my little sheet of paper because I prepared for some marks for this very special day. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Kimberly Snyder. I'm the newly appointed executive director of New Museum Motion. Well-deserved. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight to celebrate this special moment with us. It's so great that we have such a great array of people here. We have new Muse supporters, museum professionals, and community leaders. First, I'm going to start off with just a little overview of the program. Hopefully, we don't take too much time so we can spend every, every moment absorbing all this history. Um, we're going to do remarks from the new Muse staff. We're going to talk about the concept and the future of the lab. And then thanks to the Los Gatos Chamber of Commerce, we're going to do a ribbon cutting, officially opening this space to the general public. <coughs> and then after that, we'll have a brief tour with our new curator, Allison Raylo, <laughs> who not only curated the lab, but also the beautiful Los Gatos History Gallery that we're all in right now. And then last but not least, our collections room will be open for the remaining of the evening, and our Registrar and History Programs Manager, Alexandra Schindler, will be there to answer questions and then to bring you all back. Um, so, the project began in 2019 with the dream <laughs> to share untold stories of the Los Gatos and surrounding communities through the exploration of New News permanent art and history collections. This ambitious endeavor took many people and agencies to bring to life. Um, I have to take, thank the new MU team who are the driving force behind this dynamic project and our funders who provided crucial support to make this possible and our community who over the years have entrusted us to care and steward the collection. Our previous executor, executive director, Maureen Cabon javi who I don't see in the crowd, uh, but she had not yet, she'll be here at some point. Have the foresight to undertake an ambitious, uh, what? I'm just saying she's about this tall. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't see her. Sorry. Um, she had the foresight to undertake an ambitious opportunity that was made available by the County of Santa Clara's historic grant program. This initial investment from the county sparked this incredible journey. When we look to the future, Amy Davis secured funds from the Institute of Museum and Library Services that pays for half of this project over the next three years. However, none of this would have been possible without the vision and creativity of the Director of our Collections and Exhibitions, Christiana Colin Johnson. He demonstrated through this project that history is anything but static. And this lab is a place for our community to engage, learn, and share history. And we, as we continue on this journey, we will need support for our community to ensure that it doesn't stay static. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a special thank you to our funders who provide vital operational support that allow us to dream big and undertake projects like, projects like these. Thank you to the Mike and Elise Parsons Art Endowment, the Flick family, Renee DeSantis, the Packard Foundation, for new funder, the Borgenick Foundation, the bequest of Leonard Pacheco and Diane Roberts, SB Creates in partnership with the County of Santa Clara, and Peggy and Phil Keon. And last but not least, thank you to our enthusiastic board of directors, who some of you are here tonight, um, who are just wonderful cheerleaders and supporters of the new people. And now, Cristiano, our director of exhibitions and collections, will say a few words about the Since then, the museum has undergone several iterations. We began as a natural history museum, and then a local history museum, and then an art and history museum, which uh, we are to this day. <laughs> um, in 
2015, we released this space. So the entire collection from the two buildings that they were housed in came here. And since then, before we received the funding from the county and um, IMLS, uh, the museum didn't really have the resources to properly care for and store and really steward the collection. There was uh, no working catalog, which um, we're changing that here. <laughs> Alexandra will talk about that a little later. Um, inventories were lost and disassociated with the objects they were related to, and there were about five different numbering systems. Um, and so there wasn't really the opportunity to engage someone to really look at every single object and photograph it, record it, um, create all of that valuable metadata. Um, so the HTP grant, the one that, can, <laughs> that sparked this project. Um, we were able to not only um, build out this lab area, but also retrofit our collection storage space to bring it up to museum standards. Purchase archival material to properly house the, all our, our art and artifacts so that they are available for generations to come. The lab, which we're all here to celebrate tonight, is very exciting. It, the whole concept behind the lab is to really activate the collection. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to store it properly, to have a catalog people can view online, and but you know what then? It's just sitting in boxes still, in the you know not on view, no one can see it. It's just there. So this the, the lab was created to give us an opportunity to display these objects, some of which haven't seen the light of day in decades or ever since they were donated. So the purpose of the space is to further educate and engage the public in an accessible and hopefully relatable way. You'll see a lot of these objects are displayed like someone might display them in their home to really build those connections to you know, see people in this space. Also, all of the exhibition, all the, sorry, all of the written content is written in the first and second person in an attempt to make people feel really comfortable that they're welcome in the space, that they you know, belong in the space. Museums aren't this scary place that you have to be super smart to come into or appreciate. The majority of our collection, interestingly, is our objects from everyday life, um, which I find really, um, it's very special. It tells us a lot about people who lived here and made their life livelihoods there it gives us really good context to you know the importance of um, the museum collection beyond beyond the ordinary and the local we are also we're also honored to steward some globally relevant collections um, the Frank and George collection there's a small exhibit of them here. <laughs> In the early 20th to mid 20th century, they were partners in art, life, and love. They were the first openly out common law gay couple in the United States, maybe the world, in a, <laughs> you know, in a time where same-sex couples had to hide, they had to pretend they were roommates or brothers, in some cases, father and son, just so they wouldn't be persecuted. Um, and we are fortunate enough to house the largest co single collection of their artwork, um, archival ephemera, correspondence, and journals. Uh, it's been an honor for me to work on this project. It's been years in the making. And I'm so excited to share this with you our visitors and the general public. I want to also mention that this is just the first phase of the lab. As we continue to catalog our collection, 
uh, when we start accepting new donations again. This space will change, it will grow, there's still some improvements uh, we need to make, like the lighting. Um, so your continued support, both moral and financial, is <laughs> greatly appreciated. It's going to a very, very good <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce Alexander Schindler, our registrar, who without none of this would be possible. So as the registrar, what that means is that I am sort of like the boots on the ground. I'm the person doing all of the cataloging of the collection. I'm opening every box, looking at everything, documenting it, describing it, measuring it, photographing it, putting it in the database that you can all access online. So I, I've seen everything and <laughs> handled everything in the collection. Um, and as Cristiano said, you know, kind of the future of this lab and of like the collection at UNU, I think is very bright. Um, Cataloging will continue in this space. I will sit here every day and look at objects and photograph them and store them. Um, and as Christiana mentioned, there's still improvements that we want to make. Um, but one of the things that we're also looking at is how the collection can better reflect the Los Gatos community. You know, we've done some a lot of fabulous educational programs. Um, we had a researcher, a scholar who wrote a book on Franklin George come give talks. You know, we've had webinars with our Ming Huang alumni, but how are those stories and those people represented in the collection? So once the cataloging and the inventory is complete, you know, we're gonna think about our collection strategy and how we can purposefully seek out the stories and the tangible objects of people who maybe didn't see themselves in museums. So that's kind of where we see the future of the collection going. Um, there's also some conservation needs. You know, we're looking at really caring for some of these objects. We have a lovely self-portrait in here of Frank and George that needs conserving. Um, as beautiful as Mount Charlie is, he needs some conserving. You know, so there's some plans in place to make these objects even better and brighter. Um, we'll also continue to have internships. Um, thanks to the IMLS grant, we have money to pay a collections intern to help with this work. And so, you know, we're really helping train the next generation of museum professionals in an equitable way, um, which I think is very exciting. As someone who only had unpaid internships, <laughs> I'm very happy for paid internships. Um, you know, we also view this as a programming space. You know, we will have talks in here. We can um, welcome in subject matter experts who maybe talk about lace making and Examples from our place collection or taxidermy, use our taxidermy. So, really teaching people more about the objects in the collection that they can come and see in here. Um, also, we'll be open for visiting researchers or the general public to come see. Like, if there's something you see on the catalog and you want to know more, you can reach out to us and we can set up appointments. Researchers can do research and set up appointments. Um, so, really making it a functional space where happen in the real time. Um, and yeah, that's the bright future of the lab. Hopefully, stay tuned for what comes next. Uh, but now I will introduce Jennifer Lynn, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Works Brief. I'm Jennifer Lynn, the new executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, and we're just so thrilled to celebrate New New and the opening of their collections lab. I just want to say that have this museum in this town, you are a gem in this town, a huge draw, and a really big part of a vibrant town. So I feel like tonight is not just celebrating the collection lab, but just celebrating the museum as well. We're so thrilled. And to have a collections lab that really kind of opens up the interactivity and connecting with visitors, I think is such an amazing prospect. So we're so thrilled for you. And at this point, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Maria Risto, who wants to share a few words as well. Grateful to the people that have um, brought this museum. 
museums to those places at. I mean, the people who have made donations, but the staff, the people who have worked at New Moon for all these years. I mean, I remember um, taking my kids to the old Tank Museum and the Forbes Mill Museum and looking at the taxidermy, looking at the objects, and this is a whole transformative experience. I love the concept of having the objects available but having stories attached to them. And I, I know that our lives right now are enriched by understanding our past. And this museum has done an amazing job in terms of bringing up all of the past, from the Wakwa Olode, um, the people who founded Los Gatos, you know, just putting all this together and the fact that they're reaching out to get the stories that maybe have not been part of it. This will just keep getting richer. And what I think about is the, hip, the history, you know, is the past, but we don't know all of the past. And so there's always more stories you can pull out to enrich it and learn more and understand our community better. And it's a real gift and you're such a partner to our town and such an asset. And I'm just so proud and honored to be here tonight to celebrate this amazing next chapter. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, let's start with the starting from five. Five, four. 